If you haven't finished the quiz, you can just set it to the side and you can get to it in a minute. Don't shut your computer down because you're going to be wanting to get back on it. Okay, so here is, uh, set on my desk. Um, really quickly, the U of U Science Day is this Saturday, so if you haven't got it signed up, um, I don't think you can still sign up. You can try, um, but you can always go down and just go around. You just won't get a lunch. So you can still go to it and still get the extra credit if you want to, but you just can't, you don't get the lunch. Um, Weber State is also having a science day, uh, same offer for that. That is um, November 10th from 8.30 in the morning till noon. So if this Saturday doesn't work for you, maybe the 10th does. Um, I have this hot linked on your DSD canvas so that you can go right to it and register. Um, the only bad thing is if you didn't register for the U and if you don't register for this one, you are not put in the pool that gets the possibility of the scholarships. Okay. Um, remember that when you are absent to come to Canvas and figure out what you missed. So if you missed last time, I've got two periods up here that are hot linked to our um, YouTube videos. And then I've also got the two right here that says period three and period four that are to directly linked to OneDrive. So today we're going to work on naming. I've already got period one up there. It hasn't come in as far as, as the picture, but it's ready to roll. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> we are going to learn about ionic bonding today. Um, we're going to learn about two types. I've actually divided up into four different types of naming for you so it makes it easier. We're going to need to use the back page of your green front page in order to get some notes in there because she didn't leave any room for notes, she just went right into naming. So if you'll just turn to the back page of your um, front green page, we're going to take some notes on there to start with. Okay, so just do a real, you're going to divide it into two parts, the upper part and the bottom part. So then the upper part we're going to call type one. So right at the top, type one, do a real quick sketch, and I do mean real quick sketch, of what the periodic table outline would look like. And we're going to fill some things in for each type. You can also put for a description on the type one, remember at the back of the green page right now, that type one is metal ions with only one charge. So they only have one charge. And these are where they're at. It's the first column not including hydrogen. Hydrogen's its own type. We'll talk about it later which we've decided is a plus one charge. The second column which is always a plus two charge. These guys don't have any different. And then we have what's called the slide, or what I call the slide. And when you think of a slide, it goes fast at the first and then sort of slows down. So we've got three right here, boron, aluminum, and gallium that have a plus three charge. Zinc that has a plus two charge. And then uh, silver that has a plus one charge. That's what I call the slide. These elements only have these charges. They don't have another charge. So I will call these type one. So in order to do type one, you just name it, name what it's with, and change the ending of the negative ion to IDE. So for instance, sodium chloride is NaCl, right? So this is where we get this type. So we're gonna practice this type after everybody gets an example down real fast on your green. So you get this down so you can go back and look at this. I would. So these ones always have this charge. Just remember hydrogen's not part of the group. It's going to have its own type. It's very particular. If you went anywhere else but here, you wouldn't get this type. So you'd be, it would be, and the reason why column types, one, two, three, do you need a calculator? Yeah. On top here. Um, is because it's a lot easier than saying these are the ionics that have only one charge. Do you remember where they're at? And these are the ionics that have multiple charges and there are some exceptions to the rule and da 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 da. I just call it type two. So it's easy for me to say, okay, remember that's type one, this is type two, what do you do that's different? Okay, are we okay or we need a few more seconds? 
So you just need basic column one's plus one, column two's plus two, don't include hydrogen. Boron, aluminum, and gallium plus three, zinc plus two, and silver plus one. Okay? So when I call, remember the slide, that's the slide. Three, 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 two, one. Okay? All right, going forward. Going back to your grid now. We're going to go back to the grid, and then we'll come back, and we'll put type two on that green page, too. So looking at where lithium is, what is the formula for lithium? Or what is the symbol for lithium? Li. Okay, what charge will it take? What column is it in? It's in the first column, so it's going to be a plus one. Good. Sulfide. Sulfide comes from sulfur. We just changed the ending to IDD, IDE to tell us that it's la, 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 la. tell us it's the negative ion. So sulfur is number 16. In order to be like a noble gas, it needs to gain two to be 18. So it's going to be an S with a two negative. Now, we always, when we put compounds together, we want them to add to equal zero. Okay? So just like we did last time when we were, we were doing the electron dots, remember? We've got to think and say, okay, I've got one, sul one sulfur, it's got a negative two charge, and I have one lithium, and it has a plus one charge. They've got to add to equal zero. So how many of each of these do I need? How many lithiums do I need to go with how many sulfurs, or how many sulfurs do I need to go with how many lithiums? So it's sort of like an algebra equation. So if I were to, don't write this on your thing, but if I were to do this, I have a plus one. What do I need to times it by to add to a negative two? What do I need to times it by to equal zero? So if I did that, how do I make that statement true? That, so I put a 2 here, right? And I put a 1 here to make that statement true, right? Because 2 times plus 1 is plus 2, plus 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So plus 2 minus 2, right? Because this would be a plus 2 plus a minus 2. That would equal 0, right? That would make that statement true. So this tells me how many I need. I need 2 lithiums and 1 sulfur. Could I have done that without this? Yes. I just say, oh, I've got to be able to add it so it doesn't have a charge overall. If lithium has a plus charge, sulfur has a negative 2. If I add them together right now, I'm going to end up with a negative 1 left over, right? So I need another plus. Okay, so let's go to calcium. Calcium is C little a. What column or charge is it? 2 plus, good. Fluoride, what element would that be? Fluorine, right. And fluorine is F. What charge would it be? It's one away from being a noble gas, so it's going to be negative one. So here I have a plus two and just a minus one. So how many of each do I need? How many calciums do I need? Just one, right? How many fluorines do I need to balance out the calciums? Two. So I'm going to put a capital F and a subscript two. Okay, let's go on to the next one, strontium. Strontium is a capital S, lowercase r. What charge is it going to be? It's in the second column, so it's going to be a plus two. Good. All right, bromide, what is that? Here's a hint. It's going to be on the right-hand side of the periodic table. It's bromine, right? And bromine's how many away from being a noble gas? It's one away, good. So again, I want it to add to zero. Which one do I need more of? Bromine. So I just need one strontium, and how many bromines? Two. Okay, I want you to try the next three on your own. Yes? They use it as subscript because we do charges up top, so we don't want it up top because that would be our charges. Subscript just tells us how many. If we did a full-size number, it gets in the way. Okay, so I'm going to wa I'll wander around if you need help. After a few, about a minute, I'll put up the next one, and then after about another minute, I'll put up the next one. So stay with me if you can. If you get done and you're waiting for us, 
you'll want to go back a, or forward a couple pages until you see where there's the review questions on this assignment so you don't get behind. So magnesium. Magnesium will be on, the first one will be on the left or in the slide. So it's the first two columns or the slide are the positives. And your negatives will be on your right-hand side of your periodic table. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would not start right there because what's what we're learning today. I would oh, go okay. right here because this is review. Okay. So keep going, flip page, flip the page again. Right there is where I would start because okay. that's review stuff. Then you can get ahead. It is. Good. Good job. Yes, ma'am. It is. Oxide is oxygen. It should be a negative two, though. One, two, you don't count oxygen. Doing okay? You're so quiet. <laughs> Just oxygen. Yeah. Oh, one, two. Should be a negative two. Should be O, negative two. Mm hmm. So, right, so how many of this one do you need? Uh, one. Two. You need two positives to balance out two negatives, right? Okay. So then it's N2. Yeah, but NA2 is down. Subscript. Yep. So, MG, second column, plus two. And chlorine, minus one. Because it's one away from being a noble gas. Yep, it's up on the board. Oh, it is? Uh-huh. <laughs> so I would skip this page because we're still learning it, and I go to the next page. Because these two are also this assignment. So when you, if you get ahead and you turn the page over, you'll see where it says practice and there's still grid line. Go one more page and that's review stuff, the next two pages. So on this one, are you looking from this side to this side? So this is the most, this is the least. So it says from least, yeah, from this side to that side. So for crimson, since 38, it would be zero for the predictive charge? Right. Okay, I'm going to put sodium oxide up. Hopefully you've got a chance to get that one done. Some of you are having a little struggle. If you need me, my help, please ask. Double check and make sure you're doing it right. Okay, so I have something that's a negative two, or sorry, positive two, and I only have one thing that's a neg it's one negative. So I have these two positives here. I want overall to be a zero charge. So if I have two positives and one negative, I'm going to have to add another negative to balance out the two positives, right? So that's where I'm going to, this is two positives. I only need one of those, but I need two of those to go with this to add to zero. So I have no overall charge. So I would write it MgCl subscript 2. Cl, uh, and then subscript 2. It's like this. It's down. Yep. Yep. 
That just tells me how many. So anytime I have a subscript, it tells me how many I have. So like on this one, you have Na plus and an O2 minus. So this time I have two negatives and only one positive. So I need to add another positive. So it would be like Na2? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Yep. You got it. Yes. What do you do when you have four elements? So we put the one that's, that's donating to all in the center, and the other one's going to be around it. But it doesn't matter, like... So where did you get it from? So it would, one would have, chlorine would have to oh, remember. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, can I get another periodic table? Mm, yep, there's some right next to Jen Cannon at box lid. So right here, you have the sodium, and then the two, and then the oxygen. Why right. don't the two come after the oxygen? Because I don't need two oxygens. I need two sodiums. So you need two... I need two, two positives two two to go with to a that. negative two, right. So then this one would be... BAF2? Yes. Don't forget to put the charge. Okay, so this is the last one you should have. Sorry, my pen is not right real great over here in the corner. Okay, now I need everybody to come back up because we're going to do a check. We're going to go to poll everywhere. So, the question you're going to answer is, what is the chemical formula for calcium phosphide? You're going to respond at pollev.com forward slash Stacy Howell 014 on the computers, or you can try and see if it'll work on your, on your phone if you'd like to text. Um, we were having problems with the phone earlier, so there was only one or two they've been able to use the phone. That's why I told everybody to get a computer. But I'll let you have a few minutes to, to bring it up, and then I'm going to go to that site. And we'll see what, how well you learned what we just did. So everybody go now because I'm going to only give you another two minutes to get your answer in. Pollev.com forward slash Stacy Howell 014. Do the hot link from here. Or maybe it is. Come on, make it large. It's freaking out on me. Just a second. I need to 